Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. I wasn't planning on doing this video. It just came to me. And so memories started coming into my mind. And when that happens, I know that's God speaking to me. What happened uh, was my ex-husband died. And the, the minister said, he will speak to you through your memories. And, and it's the weirdest thing. Sometimes I feel my ex-husband is haunting me. And so um, the preachers in the U.S. have been saying that God is going to visit the cities. And that some people may be getting judgments. Not the good people, the not so good people. And so the other night I had um, a strange dream and it was like a big cloud, but it was not like a regular cloud was over a big city. I don't know if it was San Diego and I thought, uh-oh, God's here. Uh, okay, one time when I first, you know, many, many years ago, I saw the Shenina glory on a preacher's fingertip. It was like the Baptist. It was like a little, a little, um light and then since then I have seen it before quite a few times so I knew that's what it was so God is visiting the cities and uh, some of the evildoers may be in for a nasty surprise that was one thing that popped into my mind because I'd forgotten about that dream and when I had it I thought uh oh God's checking out the cities okay so now this video is this inflation is coming and some people are going to be hard hit. But I want to put these out there for my followers, just like the last Dollar Tree uh, food I bought. You know, if you have canned food from the pantry and you have a little food stamps left, you know, it's going to help you if you uh, buy some food your family likes. Some of it you may get at the food bank. Okay, now. Tip number one, I got this from my uh, neighbor and he was an Uber driver, so he was gone all day and he came home at, at all day and all night. He worked constantly. And so what he did is he turned off his utilities at the breaker switch, all except for like the refrigerator and something else. But if you're, the utilities probably will inflate. So I thought of this, if you turn off all the breakers except the kitchen and you get one of those power strips and you attach extension cords to that you should be able to plug in like um christmas lights those will light sheet um you can drag them from room to room uh you can plug them in your uh, television or get a little heater those i suggest getting one of those and so um, the power strips are not too expensive and you can buy the, a lot of people have Christmas lights and their Christmas decorations and they have power strips and extension cords and you're gonna use those while, and so the guy was never home basically and the utilities were off and his utilities were $8 a month. So say you were only saving, now this wouldn't be if you live in California, $30 Thirty dollars. That's going to buy your groceries one, one uh, week. Don't be resistant, and if you ever need it, it will pop into your mind. So um, the lights would be the compute, the Christmas lights, and the heat would be a small heater or an electric um, blanket on top of a sleeping bag. Okay, that's one. Now about credit cards. If you have credit cards and things are getting very tight, use your grocery money and your utility money to pay your um, credit card on a cash back card. Don't lose your cards. And then use that money to buy your groceries. So all you're doing is you're just satisfying the credit cards. And then if, if you can, try to keep one credit card that you use with maybe like a small credit card with $200 in case you need gas or something. I don't agree with leaving yourself credit cardless. One thing that led me to the Coke is, is the tea was not to my liking and it was about three o'clock and I just thought, oh my gosh. 
That was my excuse. So you're going to be smart about your credit cards. You're go for now, when you're really hard up, you're going to satisfy your credit card payments. It's like treading water, but who cares? You're going to get through this um, recessionary period with your credit. Okay, now let's say if you're really, really, so some of this stuff uh, you're probably not going to like and you're going to be, you're even awful to put it on YouTube. This is for people that are sitting in the house with no money. Don't let other people worry about, don't worry about what other people think because they're going to sleep soundly while you and your family are starving. Return anything you possibly can. You don't necessarily have to have a, um, what do you call it, a sales receipt. You can try. One time I was in Food for Less and I saw a lady returning, she had like bags of food and it looked like she had gotten it at the food bank and she returned it and the checker was going, you didn't buy this here and she gave that back. But then maybe two or three would go by and then you didn't buy this here and so she was able to return her canned food. So if you have food from the food pantry and you have any clue where it was bought from, if you really, really need money, return it. And that goes for any like new items. If there's any possibility whatsoever you can return it, return it and get the money. So the lady returned the canned goods and they probably like put them in the uh, recycle bin, you know, where I buy stuff a lot. And, uh, you know, she got some money and I saw her go in and buy fresh vegetables. I mean, it was a slimy thing to do, but I figured it was an act of uh, desperation. Even better, if you have, if you can, leave the receipts on your stuff for a while just in case, which is a crappy thing to do, but, you know, okay, that's enough on that. <laughs> okay, now the other thing is, when I went to beauty school, when I was a girl, I was 16, I'm 66. So say that was 50 years ago, and this is one of the things that popped into my mind. The teacher goes, you girls do not come to school with a dirty uniform. You wash yours out the night before you get to, and you wear the clean one, and you rotate them. You do not come to school dirty and comb the back of your hair, which I could use that advice sometimes. So you get two sets of clothes, you wear one, you wash them out. Better yet, if you can wear the pants, not the underwear, and not really the shirts, but if you could wear the pants twice, that would be awesome. And you have two sets of clothes, that way you're not generating piles of laundry that are gonna cost you $20 to wash when you're broke. Or you go to one of these laundry mats and you jam everything in one load. I used to sell stuff at the swap meet and I would buy so many clothes you wouldn't believe it. I would jam them all into these big washers and wash them. And you know, because they sell better when they're clean. So as far as laundry goes, you want to, you know, figure out what you're gonna do. Okay, no. You're going to try to get yourself some kind of side hustle, whether it's an, a YouTube channel, whether it's selling on eBay, especially if you have kids' clothes and stuff, or a swap meet, or a flea market, or a yard sale, or, you know, a Craigslist. Why? Because if you get $30, you can buy that stuff I showed you. One night, a uh, long, long time ago, this thought just popped into my mind. I wanted to redo my entire house. Unfortunately, I left it at the hell hole. No, I, I donated it. I wanted to do all metal furniture because it was indestructible. And so there was this ad and it said something like, computer table, $10. So I went to this strange guy's house and it was scary too. And I said, you're not, this was stupid. Don't ever do this women. And I prayed to God and the guy looked really, really horrible. It looked like he had a carcinoma sore on his neck. And I thought, oh my God, this poor guy. And so I went in and the table was nice and it was $10. And I said, okay, I'll take it. He goes, let me carry it to the car for you. I go, oh no, no, he looks so frail. And he threw in two chairs. He insisted to go with the table. 
And so what I did is I took everything to the car wash and I sprayed it down and then I left it outside and I had it for like 10 years. And so the guy was really desperate for money, but the point is sometimes those Craigslist things can really, you know, get you a few dollars when you really, really need it. This was, uh, you know, the yogurt that's 850. We have this little pamphlet with the coupons. It was in that, I think it was the penny saver. Okay, so you're gonna try to come up with some uh, side hustle. One of the best things you can ever find is things like heaters, little air conditioners, camp gear, anything a person might need that you can use for barter. It might go to that, you never know. Curbside junk, I have gotten so much curbside junk. I have shown you, but since I'm doing the minimizing, I'm trying not to accept curbside junk. But some of the curbside junk, I guarantee you is a nicer than a lot of people have in their houses and you can sell it at the swap meet. Clothes, I sell tons of clothes. Now, okay, you're really, really desperate and you don't have any money. The first thing you do in, in San Diego is you call 211 and you tell them, listen, I can't pay my utilities. Um, also out here, Father Joe's and those places have cars for deserving families. And don't forget Section 8, apply. So um, you call 211 and then they will direct you to the pantries or you can just go under pantries in your area. And out here we have the Catholic churches, the Adventist church. I've never known the Mormons to turn anyone away. Um, and then, you know, there's, you know, they're listed. The food bank in, in um, El Cajon, there's tons of them. All you do is you show verification of your address and you get yourself some food. So, okay, you don't have very much food in your house and that's how you're gonna get a little stockpile. So if the Adventists have food two times a, a week, you go and you get your food. First of all, they give you enough for a month a lot of times. And also, the time I took up my friend, she came out with two huge boxes. And also the Baptist Church, I think that's El Cajon Boulevard where that um, Baskin Robbins is twice a week. You can go there Tuesday and Thursday and they have fresh produce on Saturday and then on the same day you could go to the Adventist. Okay now another thing is start canceling everything you don't need. Okay I heard and this shocked me too people uh, canceled after you know they went back to work they canceled Netflix which shocked me because it's only $11 a month. I go, oh, smart going. How are you going to watch Harry and Meghan now? I'm not about to. I would if I needed to. Now, another thing, and this is not easy. Start cleaning and start organizing your stuff. The stuff you're going to sell, the stuff you're going to keep, you know, and clean up the house really good because you're going to be able to think clearer. When I was working, my apartments would be a terrible mess, but generally I could put them back together if I had to. All right, start cleaning your stuff little by little. It's not that difficult. Um, I bought like an assortment of um, spray-on cleaners, you know, bathroom cleaners, and that really helped. You just leave it 10 minutes and then you could wipe it down. You might have to do it two or three times. Okay. Prepare for evacuation. I mean, if, even if you don't have a car, you want to be the first one out, not the last. And so um, I prepare for that all the, all the time. That's why I was doing the car living thing. And especially like floods and take your food with you, if you possibly can. If you, go, if you evacuate in a vehicle, you should be able to take your food. Okay, now, if things start getting really bad, have it into your mind, well, what am I going to do? Well, maybe I would live in my car. Well, maybe from my car I could get a van. Maybe from my van I could get a motorhome. Maybe from my motorhome I could get um, a trailer. Maybe I could share a house. Maybe I could rent a bedroom. Maybe I could stay in a garage for a while until I could get, don't wait until you're homeless, be thinking before. 
Okay, now I knew someone, and this popped into my mind, and I thought it was weird. I go, okay, this is weird, but I will tell you this. My client, I had this client. She was an industrious and smart, and what she did, I've told you about her. She married this really refined guy from the Mideast. He was a professor, and she was always talking, my husband, my husband, and one day he came in and I went, ooh la la, boy, she's got the husband. But what she told me is that a lot of Mideasterns are very refined, especially in this area. So um, she had this friend, and her friend was so cheap, and they knew it too, and they would laugh. She came over for dinner every night, and they just set her a table, and she ate there every night. And, and um, I said, well, does your husband mind? Because my husband would go, okay, enough is enough. She goes, no, he likes her, and I like her too, and I don't mind, but she's just so incredibly cheap, and we cracked up. Okay, here, a lot of, some of them, the Mideasterns, they set their garage up like um, with two long tables, and like the friends come for dinner, like feasting every night. And everyone pays a small amount. And so the person preparing the feast makes a little money, something like that. You could like combine your resources with friends. Or if you have good friends every other night, one of the best things is casseroles. So that's all I have on that. Okay, so now I have another... Um, another thing uh let's see i'm gonna come back okay you guys please like comment and subscribe and god bless you all